spent so much time over at the Legacy over the last couple months. Obviously, it's important for me to be there, and I'm so excited about the expansion. But things are still going really well here at the Reptar, and I figured it would be a good day to kind of just spend some time looking at the animals, kind of giving you an update. Obviously, my girl Ivy is doing amazing. I mean, she's eating like a pig. I've been eating like a pig. She's actually eating pigs, actually, which is pretty interesting. And of course, we've got Ariana over here. She's like, yes, give me food. But as soon as these guys realize that you're not feeding them, they become absolute puppy dogs. You guys know I love Anaconda. And Mike and Connie are doing such a good job of just keeping track of everything over here, making sure everything is doing well. Well, basically, we're over there taking care of that. And again, you got to remember that Mike and Connie will be across the street with all these animals, right? So these animals get moved across the street, and so do Mike and Connie. And then we're not even sure who's going to be working here when we replenish here. So it's going to be a little bit of a juggle for sure. But you know, all the animals here are doing well. Helen is still amazing. Obviously, we got Clementine. We got a new bearded dragon. We've been switching them out so that there's not a lot of high stress. We have Flaming Hot yeah. Store, and then now Clementine is over here. The Blue Tongue Skink is doing good. And of course, Baby Kush. I mean, I tell you what, it's funny. I just watched the video when we got him the other day. And he was like this big. I mean, like this big. Now look at how giant he is. He's not exactly full grown, full grown. They can get a little larger, but he's certainly an adult now. And that is one impressive animal. And I love it to death for sure. You're a fish, obviously you're doing good. So interestingly enough, since Lee, our aquarist is working here, we were losing a lot of gear of fish over time. I mean, it seems like we're replacing them every two or three weeks. We'd have to get a shipment. Well, he's kind of figured out all the pH and ammonia and put some sand in here for some bacteria. And we like really don't lose them anymore, which is really cool. Which means they're going to get bigger and the bigger ones actually are cooler because they have like more like like just kind of run on it. It's really, really cool. Now, interestingly enough, take a look at this. This is so cool. We actually gave Cupcake some time just off. Just put her over at BHB, gave her a little time off and kind of switched out because you know, we don't really take Cupcake out because we don't really trust her that much. She's so big. We ended up bringing Banana Bread over here, which is his name. I know the name is cute. It's how <laughs> a Sun Glow Albino called Boa. And I tell you what, for people that don't think Boas need climbing, this gives you a perfect example. Cupcake used to climb a ton. Banana Bread spends a tremendous amount of his time up in the trees, but it's a very tame boa. So now we have a boa you can actually take out and have a good time with. And speaking of climbing, I mean, look at Perdita. I love when she does this. I mean, there's just something so special when they kind of curl up almost like a green tree python and just kind of hang out there. Retics love climbing. And again, that's another thing that I love about across the street is that our enclosures are going to be even bigger and taller and more climbing. And we're trying to take all the lessons that we've learned from the Reptera 1.0 and 2.0 and kind of install them into Legacy Aquarium. Of course, Drogo is doing amazing too. Now, Drogo will stay right here where he's at in this enclosure because he loves it here. We want to kind of not stress him out. So he's got his trees and stuff like that. And the enclosures for Lilo, Lilo, Stitch, Sid, and then of course Brillo will be similar size to this. Well, actually, they'll be the exact same size with the exception of Brillo, which will be a little bit smaller. So it's going to be kind of like very similar. We want to have a tree, we want to have climbing. But with Lilo, we'll have the grating on the ceiling just like Drogo's cave, whereas the other ones, we won't have the grating because they don't really climb. So there's no sense in having a grating on top. So it'll just be a ceiling with light. He is so absolutely adorable. El Machino is looking great too. So again, I just kind of want to give you guys an update of what's happening over here at the Rep Show. you guys that things are still doing really well. Obviously, we still have some, some water issues when it comes to salt and pepper. But we're just so close to moving everything over. We figured rather than trying to tear something down another project, we'll just wait. When we move salt and pepper over to the new enclosure, we can really break it down. In the meantime, these pig pads are saving our lives. I mean, the company pig is just absolutely incredible. They've been sending us all kinds of stuff. So thank you for them. Shout out to them. Uh, put a link in the description to their stuff. If you ever have something that's leaking a little bit, they are absolutely incredible. But salt and pepper are getting big and I cannot wait to get them into their new enclosure. It's going to be amazing. Speaking of amazing, look at these guys here. These, of course, are Sanzinia and they're both together right now. And what's really exciting is the other day they were breeding. They were locked up, copulating, which is really exciting. Now, they're a little bit small. They're only two and a half years old. Typically, they need about another year to get going. So I'm not expecting babies, but holy cow, we might have some baby Sanzinia later this year. You never know. If not this year, certainly next year. Like I mentioned, Brillo is actually going to be getting a nice big enclosure. It's actually, as far as square footage, is about four times the size. And of course, instead of being in a smaller cage, they don't climb, so they don't need the height. But it is going to have like an eight or nine foot cage, too. So we'll try to put some climbing stuff just to see if he wants to do it. But they are ground dwellers. He's like, come on, Dad, can I come out and play? He's going to love his new enclosure. We had him over there yesterday just running around inside the enclosure to kind of just feel like how big it is. And it is amazing. He's going to have such a great time. And the interactions are going to be so much better with people being able to go inside of his enclosure rather than us taking them out and stuff like that. So Brillo's going to have a great enclosure, and I cannot wait to get him across the street. Take a look at this guy. Speaking of breeding, like with the Sanzinia, we've got the blackhead Snap and Pop are actually trying to copulate. You can see, basically, Snap has got his, his claws going underneath those vestigial spurs, and he's kind of tickling her in order for her to lift her tail up, and then they'll eventually lock up and breed. So last year, we got eggs from these guys on display. And they're going to stay here, by the way. We still have a pair of blackheaded pythons that lay downstairs at BHP. So they're actually going to go across the street. Snap and Pop will stay 
right here in this enclosure. And hopefully we'll both get both pairs breeding on exhibit exhibit. So that would be super dope. This little monkey here, I tell you what, he is something else. Like, you know, if you go like this, he will literally try to bite you through the cage, just like he did to me. He's gonna go in Diddy and Dixie's enclosure. We're hoping that's gonna work out because right now we've got like this where we can push the glass and stuff like that. Once he's in Diddy and Dixie's enclosure, you open up the cage, you gotta go inside with him. We're hoping that he's not over territorial and having a problem, but he's doing well and he is absolutely beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, take a look at how big Jeffrey is getting. Again, gonna go move across, get a much larger enclosure. Because eventually he's gonna be 14, 15 foot. So the enclosures that we're building across Street at Legacy are basically like the enclosures that are like the end game, right? Rather than building an enclosure and saying like, hey, two years from now we have to build a bigger enclosure. Moving around, we're trying to make sure that all the enclosures have enough space for the animal for their entire life, with the exception of a couple things. So he's gonna get a big cage. He's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. And of course, remember we used to have Heinz and Frenches together. Our albino and hypo albino iguanas. Now we just have Heinz on display here. Of course, with the red foot down here. And actually we have Frenches off exhibit right now. So Frenches will probably come back here. And Heinz will move across the street. And then we'll have our tortoise bend kind of together as well. I think it's working out really well. So again, that's basically all the animals from 2.0 doing really well. Let's go ahead and head over to 1.0. And of course, we're still busting out events here at the Reptarium. It's gonna be cool when this is just for private events. We have a homeschool event right now with the kids are gonna get a chance to see a bunch of animals get to meet them. But it's cool, like I said, that we'll be able to do events over at Legacy, but also do private events here at the Reptarium. So it's gonna be the best of both worlds to be honest with you. Yeah. As far as Bowser goes, you can see this little monkey right here. He's gonna get an enclosure that's about, not quite, but almost twice the size of this. Because he's getting much bigger. So it's gonna be a similar thing with waterfalls, glass and front. It's gonna be cool because it's gonna be more glass front and more kind of an arc than this is. So more viewing panels gonna be really, really dope. And that's gonna be one of the show pieces as soon as you walk in the door. Walking into the reptile zoo over at Legacy, you're gonna see Bowser. We got Juliet and Lucy here. Lucy's actually gonna stay right here and Juliet's gonna move over. It's gonna be a very similar size cage. It's actually a little bit bigger. It's gonna be about two foot larger this way. So a little bit bigger cage for Juliet across the street. Of course, we know Juliet can actually come out because she likes people. Lucy doesn't so much. And we thought if we moved Lucy over, it'd be a little stressful for her. So we'll keep her here. Juliet goes across the street. I think it's gonna work out really well. I couldn't be more exciting about this guy. We know we needed a lot more room when it comes to Matilda the Aldalbert tortoise, you know, because she does really well. We let her out a ton, which by the way, you put a new heating thing in here, which is really good because with that window, it does get a little cool here in the winter time. Well, now this heating literally stays about 120 degrees right here and she's always basking underneath it and she's doing so much better. Usually she kind of goes almost dormant during the winter. Now she's super active. And interestingly enough, talking about the company Pig, on the bottom here, we're actually using a pig pad for this as well. One of the things is, is with the slippery floor and with Matilda being so heavy, it's kind of hard for her to get up. She slips a lot, which is not good for her joints and muscles and stuff like that. So now we have the pig pad that not only absorbs all the moisture if she pees, but also it's got a nice grip to it and it's sticky as well. So we can just replace this, cut it to size and replace it every time we clean the cage, which is amazing. So again, that company pig is so cool. I can't believe we haven't been using them for years, but now we're using them and we love them to death. Take a look at this girl right here, ha. Huh. I love her to death. Of course, this is Sunrise. You guys know her. She's been around forever. Yeah. I got her when she was just a little tiny baby. This is when the Lacey Act was still intact. So basically what that meant was that you couldn't cross state lines with Burmese pythons. So there was a pet shop here in Michigan that actually had a baby albino. A friend of mine called me and said, hey, I saw a baby albino. And we actually ended up picking her up. And now she's like five years old. And she is getting big. I mean, she's got to be all of you know, 13, 14 foot. But you got to remember Burmese pythons can max out at probably 18 to 20 foot right in that range. So she's still got a waist to go, but she's definitely getting big and she's unbelievably docile. Speaking of do docile, I mean, although Gemma still is a pain when it comes to feeding, she goes on a lot of feeding strikes, but she still looks good and stuff like that. She is a docile, beautiful animal too. She will go across the street as well. And that's the thing that I've talked about a lot is that, you know, so many of these animals are going across the street. We got to figure out like, what are we going to replace them with? We have a bunch of animals at BHB. We've been kind of acquiring some new animals. I've been looking for some new animals, talking to Kevin from Nerd and stuff like that, in particular with monitor lizards, right? Because let's take, for instance, Beetlejuice over here. We're going to be moving Beetlejuice the Bell's Face Lace Monitor over to Legacy. So what are we going to replace him with? And that goes for Elvis and Toothless and stuff like that. They're going to be moved across street. Kevin actually has a black dragon for us, has a normal water monitor for so us. So we do have to look for a Bell's Face Lace Monitor over here. I think it's going to be really cool to do it. We want to have the same amount of monitors now as we do after we move, but most of the monitors that are here are actually going to go across the street. So we have our work cut out for us. Now we're actually not going to have any really small enclosures over at Legacy like these enclosures here, but we are going to have some kind of bigger ones that are maybe like, like 
this big by this big where Luna can go across the street because Luna is getting a little bit big for this enclosure. She's probably got another six months before I would say she's probably too big. And thankfully with moving over there in the next two and a half months or so, she's gonna have plenty of time. So the animals that are in smaller cages are gonna get a bigger upgrade, bigger things. We're not gonna have small cubes like this. We're gonna have bigger enclosures for everything over there. You guys know that I love frill dragons. This is our only Australian frill dragon. All the rest of them are New Guinea. But we have plenty of frill dragons to split between here and over at Legacy. I think we have like 10 or 12 frill dragons total. So it'll be pretty easy to keep half them here and have them across the I'm street. I'm trying to decide with chopsticks and the other two-headed turtles what we're gonna do. If we bring all the two-headed turtles over to Legacy, or maybe we just bring like one over to Legacy and then keep the others here or vice versa. I'm not 100% sure. Thankfully, we have more than one two-headed turtle because that's pretty cool to be able to move them across the street. We do have a little bit of a problem with the two-headed snake when it comes to Ben and Jerry. We only have one of those. Uh, I did get offered a baby two-headed snake just recently. But again, you guys know our track record with babies isn't very good, so I just don't know if I want to take that risk or not, especially now that the budget is so tight. Spending extra money on things that we may not do well with might not be proof. Albino carpets are absolutely amazing, especially the Darwin Eye, right? We have a pair of these guys right now. One's on display here and one's over at, across that BHP. And these are going to go in a cage together, which is going to be really cool, but the enclosure is going to be much larger than this. And that's, again, what I keep on kind of saying over and over again. It's going to be cool to see enclosures that these guys get to move into and how they're going to be able to live their whole life. And the enclosure that the albino carpets are going to be is literally five foot by five foot by seven foot tall. So it's going to be giant, tons of climbing and stuff like that. They're going to love it to death. But that's a huge upgrade from this enclosure for sure. And the same goes for the diamond pythons. We actually have a pair of the diamond pythons as well. There's only one here and one across the street. It's going to be cool to keep these together. Again, they have the same size enclosure as those albino carpet pythons. And then we have dart frogs and stuff like that that are going to be really cool. These dart frog enclosures, we actually are going to be working with Josh's frogs. They're going to actually sponsor an exhibit. They're going to come out. They're going to kind of fixture an exhibit out and they're going to actually donate the frogs, which is going to be super cool. Don't get me wrong. Jessica does an amazing job. I don't know if Josh's frog is going to do a better job, but it'll be nice to have a little collaboration with Josh's frogs with some dart frogs. And of course, I talked about earlier, we have Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry has to move over to Legacy because being open to the public, you want people to see the two-headed snake, right? Whereas this is going to be, again, a private event. So not many people are going to see the animals here unless you're booking a birthday party, a private event, a tour, or whatever the case may be, a scout group, or like today, a homeschool group or something on that line. So I really would love to get another two-headed snake. But unfortunately, they're just not like really available, right? So like I said, there was a baby that was available that wasn't even that expensive. I mean, it was expensive, but it was a decent deal. But again, a baby, you're taking so much risk. Especially once you get it, you're going to have to get it to grow for six or eight months before even people are handling it. And right now, it's just probably not in the cards to spend that kind of money on a baby two-headed snake that may not live and may not even be part of the future. And I always say there's a few animals that kind of remind me of the time when we started to open the reptarium. And there's none kind of bigger than Nova. I can't tell you the unlimited amount of hours I stood right here at this cage with hundreds of people standing around that wanted to hold Nova when we first opened up. He was such a hit because he's such a cool animal with those big frills. So he's been kind of an animal ambassador right from the beginning. It was him, it was Bella, it was Sunrise, it was obviously Lucy. You know, those were the animals that were like the kind of cornerstones to the Reptarium when we first opened up. So he's going to come across the street with us for sure. Yeah, we're going to split the frill dragons, but he's going to get a very similar size enclosure and similar kind of decor as this across the street. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So you can see, you know, things are going great here at the Reptarium. Mike and Connie are doing a great job. Busy. It's, everything is going amazing and we still stop here every day and spend as much time as we can but I haven't filmed here a lot so I wanted to give you kind of an update what's going on here at the Reptarium but for now let's go ahead and see what's going on over at Legacy look at what we have here guys that's right I am excited about this is this the foundation for the bridge that's actually gonna be coming you in. guys know that I've been waiting for this bridge forever well finally the foundation is getting poured right now the footings basically for the bridge itself there's gonna be footings on this side as well and then once those four of the bridges actually come in and guess what no longer walking across the board over here we're going to actually have bridges that come in and out of the legacy that you guys are going to be able to walk on when we're open. So again, the Predator tank just continues to evolve into something that's so absolutely amazing. Now we have the waterfall in the background. A meds team has done such an incredible job. They're going to kind of just, you know, straighten things up and get it all kind of themed out really good. But I love not only do we have this giant waterfall that's going to look so absolutely incredible. That juxtaposition between the waterfall and then the branch over here. It's just going to look so cool. When this is off and you can actually see inside the this tank, this is going to be a showstopper. And the other thing I love is the meds over here working on it, the actual exhibit comes down the wall, right? That's the thing I love about their work is that it's not just like an exhibit. It's like the exhibit takes over the entire area. It makes it look so absolutely pro. I couldn't even imagine it look as good as it does. So the Predator Tank, definitely one of my favorite things that these guys have done. But hey, listen, every exhibit has been amazing. My buddy Jeff from Pondering Waters is back again. Now you're working on the supply for the weeping water, right? Yeah, we got all of our, our spray bar up there. Gotcha. And obviously we're connecting here behind our wall. Gotcha. So the pipe goes in here, comes down. That's 
where the pump's up, comes up here, and now you can adjust those nozzles, the amount of flow, right? On these, no, but what we're gonna have to do is, because you really don't have to adjust the nozzles for each flow. Gotcha. What we are gonna have to do is, because this panel waves, yeah. because obviously it's not real stone, we're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking with the panel okay. to make sure that those nozzles are hitting where we need to hit them. So gotcha. it's gonna be a little bit of tweaking. A little bit of tweaking. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna look absolutely amazing. This wall's amazing. And by the way, Jeff does tons of outdoor ponds right but now. He's starting to do a bunch of indoor work too. So if you happen to have a reason where you wanted some cool indoor feature or in the summertime want an outdoor feature, please do me a favor. Pondering Waters, he's done me so many favors. I love this guy to death. Go show him some love because he does amazing work. So this is all acrylic we're gonna eventually make into some stuff that y'all can do for some fundraisers. But we can't even get this piece off the ground. <laughs> Watch your... How heavy? Give me... Some, what do you think? 100 pounds. 100 pounds. Yeah, 100 pounds. But it's hard to hold 100 pounds, yeah. right? Yeah. Hand hand. Is that cute? That's when you guys met, right? <laughs> they could be crying. Right? Yeah, like that. It's like my hand's on this side, Lori's on that side. You want to do that? Yeah, I'll just add a little bit on there. You like it, man? <laughs> we have no idea how special it is. Good. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.